will open up a window from heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Can we stand on our feet for about 33 more seconds and just magnify the name of the Lord? Go ahead and get your praise on. Go ahead and sing your song, do your dance, lift up the name of Jesus. Go ahead and make some noise unto the Lord. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Make a joyful noise, all ye land. Know ye not that it is the Lord that have made us, and not we ourselves. Somebody make a joy for Noah. They don't want us to praise them on our job. Some folks we stay with don't want us to praise them. But we in the right place to give God the praise. You can praise them in the house of the Lord. You can praise You can praise them anywhere. Well, I... Brother, I just had a flashback on one of my praises. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, I just, I just had a flashback where I was praising. You can, you can praise him anywhere. Boy, you can pray. I'm like, oh. Tell somebody, thank you, Jesus. So you can praise him anywhere, anytime. Somebody say hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. Y'all, we better get this word. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish preaching it. Good God Almighty. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. Everybody stand with me for the reading of one scripture. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. It's on the screen as well. Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. Dirty Deacon Brother Bruce Daly sent me something yesterday that was so on course. He said, you will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. We're going to be dealing with a lot of people that's on their way to hell because of their daily routine. What they are messing up on daily. And if we get this and understand this, we're going to be our educators that we'll be able to spread this word to others and help the city of Memphis because the city of Memphis is in trouble. America is in trouble. When we turn on the news, it's nothing but mess and junk. I feel like, y'all, we so special and different. I'm like, all this hell these people facing out there, I'm like, God got his people covered so good. He got us living so blessed and so good and he got us operating on another level so good. You almost feel sorry for the people that's out there. You, you be like, y'all need to get saved. Y'all really need to find God. You really, ain't no more answers for them. Nothing but the Lord. You really feel sorry for the people that's out of the ark. God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell. Hell is down there at the bottom. And all the nations that forget God. I want to use as a title of today's message, the race to the bottom. The race to the bottom. Look at them and say, neighbor, there is a race to the bottom. There's a race going on right now in Memphis that isn't covered by CNN. There's a race going on in America that is not covered by the New York Times. There's a race happening, not on the track and field, not just on the street, but there's a race going on at the bottom in hotel rooms, on church parking lots with the gossipers, at the casinos, at the crack table. This race to the bottom is happening in the crack houses as well as the seven bedroom Carrieville houses in the suburbs of folks that think they don't need God. Just because you got some money don't mean you're not in the race to the bottom. Because the Bible says if you forget God, you on your way to hell. You on your way to the bottom. So just because you can have a yacht, you can have a home in Beverly Hills, if you ain't giving God the glory, honor, and the praise, the Bible says you in the race to the bottom. There's a race going on that's sending families to hell. 
There's a race going on that's sending children to hell. There's a race going on that's sending black men and white men and Hispanic men, black women, white women, Hispanic women, even to hell themselves called the race to the bottom. This is a race you don't run with your feet. This is the race you participate in, not with your feet, but with your actions and with your thoughts. This is the only race that you can be in that you don't even know you in it. Usually when we were children, somebody said, let's race. And you would know you were in the race when they would say, on your mark. Get ready. Somebody ain't ran it so low, they said on the mark, get set. <laughs> but they go, on the mark, get ready. Then they say, get set. Then they say, go. You understand then you in a race. But most of these people don't even know they're in their race to the bottom. Because they don't hear no on the mark, get ready, get set. They just live it in any kind of way. And God said, I'm dropping you to the bottomless pits. Some people are at home right now in their bed watching TV, chilling. Don't even know they're in their race to the bottom. Oh, God. Some people are not speaking to their children, holding grudges with their own children. Don't even know they're in the race to the bottom. Some people spend more time gossiping and backbiting than they spend in worship and prayer. And they don't even know that they're in the race to the bottom. Some people spend more time whining and complaining and others being ungrateful or not faithful. They too are in that race to the bottom. Every day we see more and more people joining the race to the bottom. But the saddest part about this race is it's not just for hustlers and thieves that's on their way to the bottom. The saddest part about this race to the bottom is it ain't just the prostitutes and the pimps and the crackheads that's on their way to the bottom. The saddest part about this race is you got some people that shouldn't even be in this race. In this race with the thieves and the robbers, the prostitutes and the dope heads, you got the liars and the cheats, but you also got the people that think they know God. You got folks that think that they know God so well, but they're the main people in that race to the bottom. You got evangelists in that race to the bottom. You got pastors and preachers in that race to the bottom. You got Sunday school teachers in that race to the bottom. You got the person that used to be the saint that now is an ain't in that race to the bottom. Because whenever you fall out of God's grace, you hit the bottom. Good God Almighty. And the bottom doesn't look good and it doesn't feel good. Because I've been to the bottom. I've experienced the bottom. I've had a lot of time in the bottom. At the bottom, it's a lot of, can I borrow at the bottom? At the bottom, it's a lot of, I don't have it at the bottom. At the bottom, it's a lot of mess and confusion at the bottom. It's a lot of heartache and heartbreak at the bottom. It's a lot of sickness and pain. Instead of sunshine, it's a lot of rain at the bottom. I've been to the bottom and let me tell you, you don't want to stay at the bottom. You don't want to go back to the bottom if you come from the bottom. Hallelujah. Your finish line ain't looking too fine if you in that race to the bottom. That's something you don't want to get to the end of if you're in that race to the bottom. But anyone that forgets God, you automatically enter the race to the bottom. Good God Almighty. We got more people that think they know God in their race to the bottom than any other category. More than the pimps and the hustlers and the liars are the people that got their nice Sunday church hat on holding grudges, being mad, being evil, being spiteful, being low down, because guess what? We know better, good God Almighty. We know, ain't no excuse for us. We got the Holy Ghost. We know right from wrong. 
We know the word of God. A lot of these people in the race to the bottom, they ain't never had the teaching we get. So we understand why they own the race to the bottom. But how can we, too, be involved in the race to the bottom? We got so many folks that are messed up, and they're the fastest runners. Tell somebody, slow down, slow down, slow down. Let's slow their mouth down. You're on the race to the bottom. <laughs> slow their mouth down. You're on the race to the bottom. You better slow that hustling down. You better slow trying to trick everybody down. You're in the race to the bottom. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 22, Matthew 7, 22, for us church lovers and worshipers of God, Matthew 7, 22, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devils. And he got so much anointing. He cast out devils. God, he's anointed. Jesus, she's so anointed, she didn't cast out all them demons. And in thy my name done many wonderful works. Ooh, look at him. He's taking children to incredible pizza. Look at all these wonderful works. Ooh, they blessing all these people. They bless the mothers for their birthday. They, they giving everybody blessings, Reverend. Ooh, look how wonderful. Look at his wonderful works. Then Jesus said, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity. Say, you on your race to the bottom. Because in your heart, you a shyster. Good God Almighty. In your heart, you don't care about nobody. God knows what we do for show and what we do because it's what we know. Good God Almighty. Whatever we do, we got to make sure our intentions are right. If not, we're on our way to the bottom. Tell us about it. Slow down, slow down. Slow down. You catching up with the gang bangers. You trying to catch up with the dope boys. You trying to catch up with the KKK. The folks that kill Mega Evers and Martin Luther King. We trying to catch up with the wrong crowd. When we in that race to the bottom. But God said that if we don't have our fire for him, that he will spew us out of his mouth. You know when, some, when, some, when you spit something out your mouth? Guess where it's going to go? Is it going to go to the top or to the bottom? Listen to what he said in Revelation 3 and 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, because you ain't no fire no more. He said, you, you so blessed, I tell you to stand up and give me the praise. You just, um, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm full from the three-course breakfast I had this morning. <laughs> God said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Maggie, that's what he said. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither are cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You can't be lukewarm, even with a broken heart that Cece is going through with her brother passing. She still is in the house giving God the praise. With a broken heart. Because God don't take no excuses while we're not giving him the glory. Because the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You ain't really on fire until you praise them with a broken heart. You really ain't on fire until you done praise them and your tears are wetting up your dress. I don't know if your weave is real or fake. It's as expensive or cheap until you start giving God the praise. And it gets sweaty, but it still look good. Everybody can sit there still and they have to look good. But can you shake and give God some praise? And it still fall back in place. <laughs> but can you not care if it never fall back in place again? But I'm still going to magnify the name of the Lord. I test about it, I want some done praise. Dunn just got her a, a big paying job. She got her first paycheck on that Friday. I saw her on the set. I said, Dunn, you ain't bought no new wig yet? I said, you got all that money, you ain't bought no new wig? She said, I'm going to keep this until it fall off my head. 
She said, I ain't spending no money. It ain't gonna stop me from giving God the praise. This girl just got paid and got the same wig. She said, it ain't gonna stop me from giving God the praise. I said, I wanna praise him like that. I want to praise him like that. I want to be able to praise him no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I look like, no matter if I got money in my pocket or whether I'm dead broke, I still want to come to church and give God the praise that's due to his name. I still want to be able to magnify the name of the Lord. I don't have to look cute. I find somebody tell him, I know I'm cute, but I don't have to look cute to give God the praise. I don't tell him I know I'm cute, but I don't have to look cute. I don't have to look cute to give God the praise. I don't have to look cute to give God the praise. I know I'm cute. I know y'all cute, but you don't have to look cute to give God the praise. This is one church where you can praise him one day with a nappy head, and the next day you got a brand new thing, a Brazilian weave, and we don't care as long as you're giving God the praise. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. In this place, tell somebody, I got the praise of Hallelujah. Uh, I ain't getting in that race to the bottom. I don't want to be in that race to the bottom. I'm going to say I started at the bottom, but I ain't going back to the bottom. The soul don't say I started at the bottom, now I'm back. It say I started at the bottom, now we are I ain't started at the bottom to come back. I come started at the bottom to stay here. I'm at the bottom to stay here. I started at the bottom. Now we here. I ain't going back. I ain't going back to the bottom. My attitude ain't sending me back to the bottom. My ways ain't sending me back to the bottom. There are several factors that put Christians in the race to the bottom. There's several factors that put Christians in the race to the bottom. Number one, if we don't love one another, we're in the race to the bottom. If we don't love one another, church, brothers and my sisters, if we don't have real love for one another, God did put us in the race to the bottom. Listen to what the Bible says. I'm calling it real love. 1 John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? God said, so wrong with you. You say you love God, but you hate your brother you see every day. God said, I got a problem with that. God said, it's you, you, you want to love somebody that you can't see, but somebody you see every day God said, it's hard for you to love me. God said, that person is a liar. And liars are going to the race to the bottom. Number two, number, let me give you this other scripture. John 13 and 35. By this shall I know. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. If we don't love one another, we in trouble. We in trouble. Sister Cindy, I keep going back to Sister Cindy testifying to me. See, all the time she tell me that when she was uh, living in whatever lifestyle she wanted to live in, doing whatever she wanted to do, she said, Pastor, I know people was telling you about me. I know this. He said, but you never stop loving me. It's my job to love our church. It's not my job to judge our church. It's, it's our job to love people no matter what state they're in. Because guess what? They're loving us no matter what state we're we in. It go both ways. We need love just as much as anybody else needs love. And that's when you know you are a disciple of the Lord. When you can look past somebody's thoughts and see their needs. When you can look past what somebody going through. And say, you know what? I love you anyway. When you can look past somebody being strong, somebody on dope, when you can look past it and say, I'm not going to let you die like this. I'm not going to let you go out like this. 
I'm not going to let you go out without love. I'm not going to let you struggle by yourself. It's my job to love you. Good God Almighty. She said, then will I know you are my disciples indeed. Will you have love one to another? I don't want to know people business. I don't care to know people business. All I want to know is to love you. I ain't asking. I ain't want to know. I don't want to know what's going on. Don't tell me nothing. I don't want to know about nobody business. Because I don't need nothing to interfere with my love. I don't want to be in the race to the bottom. Because people that don't love, they're in the race to the bottom. And if we give it a read, if we give God one reason why we don't love somebody, God got a ten more than why we, he shouldn't love us. God said, come up with one reason why you don't love somebody. God said, I got some more reasons why I shouldn't love you. Because the Bible says that he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. So first, if we don't love one another, we're in the race to the bottom. Trey, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Secondly, if we don't forgive one another, we're in the race to the bottom. And you got to forgive. Because guess why we got to forgive? We want God to forgive us. And you reap what you sow. Matthew 18, 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, these guys are making me sick on my job. I'm tired of going through this stuff. The same person backstabbing me. With that being said, how often should my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Seven times? Because he got one more. He on number six. He got one more. I'm going to give you the number. I'm going to give you the number for you to tell me. Because I'm tired of this fool. I'm tired of these haters I'm dealing with. He got one more time. Jesus, how many times do I forgive him? Seven? Jesus said, I say unto you, <laughs> not seven, but 70 times seven. seven. He said, you got to keep forgiving over and over and over. The Bible said that the way of the transgressor is hard. Can we take a little pop quiz together? I used to be a school teacher, so I like giving quizzes. We're going to take a pop quiz, and we're going to use the honor system. We're going to use the honor system. I usually like when the teachers say, we're going to use the honor system, but we'll be cheating really good then. I say, you dumb idiot. You don't let nobody from one mouth have an honor system. What's the answer? What's the answer? But we're going to do the honor system. How many of us, if we say, God, I'm not going to forgive this person. And I know you won't forgive me if I don't forgive them, but I want to make a pledge to you. If I don't forgive them, I never sin again in my life. How many of you think that you can live the rest of your life without thinking or doing or not doing something right? Because sin is not just doing something wrong. The Bible says, for he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him that is sin. So when you know your sister that you don't like look good today and you don't go and give her a compliment, the Bible said you in sin. So how many of us think that we can live the rest of our lives? If you can do it, I'm going to give you $100 right now. This if you can do it, this is a hundred. No, I, 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 I'm saying this. No. Uh, Reverend, come here right quick. Let me see. Don no, come here. You just got a job. Come here. Hurry up right quick. We're going to see how much money we're going to put together. We're going to put Hurry. Okay. Reverend said she, she's going to add seven dollars. The, these ladies think cheap today. She said she's going to add. I'm going to say, we're going to pay off somebody like gas and water bill. I said, how much you going to pay? She said, she's going to pay you $7. She's going to pay you $20. <laughs> they going to leave me with the $500. So we got $527. We're going to pay off somebody like bill who can go the rest of your life without sinning. Stand up right quick. Who? Somebody said they need their light bill paid. <laughs> you, you got... $527, we're going to give you right now. She got seven, she got 20. Can you play this for the rest of your life? You won't see. Well, how many of us need our life bill paid? All you got to do is not see it. 
Somebody said it ain't gonna happen. Get it. We done. Keep your 20, keep your seven. Now, here's the thing about that, about Tina. The thing about that is, God still pays our bills for us. He still blesses us. But listen, we ain't gonna bless nobody. Until they right. Pay up God said, I'm still blessing y'all. God said, I'm still blessing y'all. Look at how many light bills he didn't pay for us. Teach Holy Ghost. So not only do we not forgive, and not only if we don't love, we're in the race to the bottom, but thirdly, if we don't pray for one another, we're in the race to the bottom. We're in the race to the bottom. Look what Job 42 and 10 said. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord also gave Job twice as much as he had before. Is it possible that your breakthrough ain't coming to because you ain't praying for you know who. Because Job didn't get his breakthrough back until he prayed for the people that was making him mad. Till he was praying for the people that was getting on his nerves. Till he was praying for the people that was giving him high blood pressure. We stop praying for folks that get on our nerves. We say, send them to hell, God. Lord, send him to the race to the bottom. <laughs> Let him hit the bottom, God. We stop praying for people that hurt us. And we ready to see God get them. But God did not release the blessings on Job's life until he prayed for the people that put tears in his eyes. Can you add those people on your prayer list too? Can you add them people on your job on the prayer list as well? Can you put their name on the prayer list without a grudge? If I put them on, I'd be like, God, why I got to do this? Lord, why me, Lord? Hey, do nothing but write the name, but Lord, this, this ain't right, Lord. You know what they doing to me, and you making me pray for them anyway. We go argue with God about writing their name on the prayer list. Somebody just call somebody's name that done hurt you and, and just say, bless them, Lord. Just call somebody's name right quick. Bless them. Rico rolled his eye. Rico said, I can't do it. Rico said, I'll do it next week. I, I, come to the, I gotta come to the altar for prayer first. <laughs> They say, you ain't done out the call yet. How can I pray for somebody? And my heart is as bad as it is. <laughs> but if we don't pray for one another, we're in the race to the bottom. Fourthly, if we don't bless one another, we're in the race to the bottom. We got to bless. Proverbs 25, if, verse 21, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. It's our job to bless people. If God expects us to bless our enemies, imagine what we're supposed to do for each other. Imagine how much we're supposed to release for each other. We're supposed to be able to do anything for each other. I don't want to hit the bottom. I'm giving you the formula on how to stay at the top and not join without knowing the race to the bottom. Number five, if we don't show grace and mercy to one another, we're in the race to the bottom. Grace and mercy. Grace gives me what I don't deserve. Mercy keeps me from getting what I do deserve. John 1 and 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
You can't be a Christian being mean and low down to folks. Because Jesus wasn't mean and low down to people. He gave people grace and mercy. He was the one that said, he that is without sin among you cast the first stone. And he was the law. Can you imagine the law? He was the law giver. He was the Ten Commandments. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Can you imagine the Word, instead of giving us a stone, giving us grace and mercy? And we ain't even the law, and we read in the stone, folks. You cannot be elevated by God. God don't want to bless mean people in high position, because that will be a bad look. That'll be a bad look if he put just anybody in high positions. Last night we were in the office and we were watching these championship boxing matches. Don was, can hear the testimony. Felicia can hear the testimony. Every person that won the championship, the first thing they said, I give honor to God. Everyone that won, we watched three different title fights. Everyone kept saying, I give honor to God. I'm working on the word and I hear these people say, I give honor to God. I look up and say, I told you. I told you last week that God put people in the high positions who are going to put him first. I'm telling you right now that if you keep God first, he will blow you up. God wants to put you in the position, but your heart got to be right. Good God, all right. Number six, if we don't stop talking about one another, we're in the race to the bottom. If we don't stop talking about one another, we're in the race to the bottom. Listen to what the Bible said in Titus 3 and 2. It's powerful, y'all. To speak evil of how many men? How, how many of y'all? Speak evil of no man. Donald Trump, speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. For why? Why? Why, y'all? For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Don't this sound like us, y'all? For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust. Sometimes lust and pleasures. The couch, the floor, the living room, the backyard, the car, the movie there, the police coming. They about to throw you out. At the, on top of the restaurant. At the bottom of the restaurant. Wherever you go, you serve a dive is lust. God said, this was us. And we would hate us. That's what the Bible said. We would hate one another. He said, we all been haters. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. God said, how are you going to open up your mouth against somebody and you was just like them? How are we going to put our mouth on somebody and we did the same thing? Okay, Reverend. Another $500 and $20 and $27. Test going. Done. We got $520, 27 Come on, you you got the money. How many, how many people in here? Now, this is the church and it's holy ground. How many people in here have ever, or you want to come up here and testify of everything you done done wrong? How many? Somebody said it's too much. We won't even get out of church. <laughs> Somebody said, Sarah said, church wasn't ever there. You'll do it. You'll testify of everything you ever did. In the dark, in the light. She said she can't remember everything. Bob, you, you, you lost. We want to know everything. <laughs> We want to know everything. How many folks ready to testify about everything they've done? Come back to night service. We're going to listen. <laughs> 7 o'clock tonight, eventually. We're going to put you up on the mic. After we get through preaching, after service, 8 o'clock, everybody leave. We're going to ask me. We still going to be here eating chicken. <laughs> we will hand you on the tape. I'll listen to you later on while I'm driving back. <laughs> We're going to record on the CD. I'll listen to you later on while we, while we driving. Just tell us, I'll leave you the alarm code. You can lock yourself in the church. 
Ain't nobody want to tell Sister Matthews everything they done. Because guess what? Some of us look so sweet and innocent. Some of us look so sweet and innocent. I know some sweet and innocent people. I don't know one or two things on her. I, tell you, I only know one or two things. <laughs> and it shocked me. The one or two things I know is a shock. The one or two things is a shock. Okay, can you imagine everything? Well, this, this church will turn into Murray. We'll be crying all day long. <laughs> That was the baby daddy. <laughs> what? <laughs> no wonder them kids look different. <laughs> no wonder one walk, <laughs> one walk like this, <laughs> and one. <laughs> no wonder this girl is crazy. Going Why the world is going home? Jericho, what is going on? This is the race to the bottom. Everything is going on in Memphis. Y'all ready for the last point? Number seven. Watch this, Zad. Watch this. Number seven. If we don't reconcile with one another, we're in the race to the bottom. We have mastered worshiping God and being mad at our brothers and sisters. We have mastered worshiping God and not talking about not talking to people for six weeks. God said, you're supposed to reconcile. <laughs> See, when you are not the offender, it's easy for you. It's easy for you to be in the room with your haters because guess what? You ain't never done nothing to them. So you can hug them and embrace them. They get uncomfortable when we come around. When we come around, y'all, they start, they wonder if we're going to smack them, stab them, shoot them. They get uncomfortable because they know they're the offender. So when you're not the offender, it's easy for you to be around anybody because you don't got nothing to do against anybody. Watch this. Watch this. Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou rememberest that thy brother have ought against thee, he said, you just gave the church $2,000. He said, after you give that $2,000, leave there thy gift before the altar. He said, we ain't going to give your money back because the church still got bills. He said, so leave your gift right there at the altar. That's in the Bible, y'all. And go that way. First be reconciled to thy brother. Then come and offer us some more of your gifts. It'll be reconciled with your brother. Because God said, you cursing your money. You cursing yourself. Knowing me enough to give me a sacrifice, but you won't sacrifice that attitude. God said, it's not just enough to sacrifice your money and you ain't sacrificing your bad spirit. It's not enough to sacrifice your gift if you're not sacrificing your tongue enough to say, I'm sorry. Watch this. It gets deeper. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. We have a ministry of reconciliation. There is nobody that we are not to be able to reconcile with. There is nobody that's, not, that's ever been to Jesus People Church that's not a Jesus People Church that we don't love today, Don. There is not one person that we can't see at the stores or in the malls or anywhere and not hug them and tell them we miss you and we love you. There is not one person, I don't care who it is, I don't care what they've done, this is a ministry of reconciliation. There cannot be one person where you 
despise enough that you don't want to see them again in your life and not be saved. You cannot be saved and hate people in your heart like that. Y'all ready for the Greek definition? Then we close it. Reconciliation. The Greek definition, the Greek word is catalagia. Catalagia. Catalaga. Y'all ready? Pick the one you like the best. Catalaga. Catalaga. What does it mean? Reconciliation or what? Restoration to favor. Now, can we do that? We say, well, I, I forgive you, but I ain't giving you no more favor. All that stuff I used to do for you, that's over with. Can you restore somebody's favor? They broke your heart. They hurt you. Can you restore somebody's favor? Can you imagine how many times God has brought us back into the graciousness of his life and restored our favor? We taught, we preached, we had a gap in our love and prayer life and nobody even knew it because he restored, Reverend, our favor. We did everything under the sun and before Sunday came, Sister he restored People wonder why you as blessed as you are and they think they know your business but there's one part of the business that they don't know. God restored my favor. Somebody stand on your feet and give the Lord a victory and clap of praise.